process of wanting to get some new pictures for fresh live shot at 6 o'clock, so we had about 40 minutes. We were going to make a quick pass, and uh, I was thinking which pieces of video I was going to use and what sentences I was going to write. And he uh, drove by and yelled a profanity. And Where are didn't get it. So well, I'll catch up to the guy. So we go by and get a shot out of the, the window and wait for a bunch of cops and ambulances and stuff to go by. Pull up on his right side up at the uh, window and I see the guy down like this and I think, I better get the heck out of there. And I start pulling off. Next thing, boom. And that was it. When you sat down like this, he had his hand in his belt as if to grab a weapon? Looking back at it now, yeah, that's obviously what it was. Clearly we can see the bullet went right through the back of your vehicle. And Mark, you were behind the wheel, is that right? I know I wasn't. Dan was driving. Yeah. You were driving, Dan. Okay. Um, I, That's right. You said that, didn't you? I couldn't believe how quickly it happened. Uh, we were driving down the street, and half the folks were saying hello on Channel 3, even though they really don't know who we are from Vegas. And then this happened just out of the blue. It's, it amazed me. Of dozens of looters, and for some reason stopped one in particular. He's put his gun back in. There's a police officer trying to lift a TV set that is out of the cart and out of the back of this guy's pickup after he sticks his gun back in his belt. Quite a scene. Here we have looters escaping from this Bedco lot. We can hear them yelling at each other to get out of the way so they can get out of here. I mean, all ages, really. Teen to middle age. Cops making a guy now, here, 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 here's an interesting sight. Here's the officer who was pulling a gun on a looter. The looter helping him lift the TV set out of the back of his pickup truck, telling him to get out of it. And, uh... The presidential contenders condemn the violence in Los Angeles. First, Governor Bill Clinton. We should say to our fellow Americans in Los Angeles, no matter how angry you are... No Electronic supply is what it said, and I would imagine there's... Uh... You know, a lot of uh, radios and things like that, but you can see they're uh, helping themselves. And there must be about 100 people inside there now. No, loo so. no looting at the Christian. Uh, uh, no, uh -uh. They, they ought, tell you what, they ought to open the door and go in there and do some reading. Might help them out a little bit. points up the fact, you said that was a dental office, most of the uh, targets for arsonists uh, and looters overnight have been commercial uh, businesses, uh, although a few residential areas have been hit. Thank you very much, Cliff, from Telecopter 4. And there's actually no way of telling right now how many people have been left homeless in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, at least 100 people we know have taken refuge at the first uh, AME Church. Our Wendy Takuda is there at the church right now. Let's go to her for the latest. Wendy? Hi, to Jess, you can see behind me that... Uh Fires everywhere across the city. I'm not going to go to the infomercial convention because uh, I figured that. Uh,
yelling and screaming at me. Because of the riots. I just made the agreement with Shirley. Just put it together to take on this apartment. The bells and stuff that you hear down there. What you're hearing is the sound of the city rioting. Los Angeles riots, April 30th, 1992. Hollywood, of course, South Central, the Wilshire area, Rampart area having problems. Looting reported widespread. You were with us about an hour ago. You saw the unbelievable video that that Chris Blatchford showed us of the looting in a Petco store in Los Angeles. Chris, uh, we have uh, the Dean Kathy on the call again with us. Talking with the Dean Kathy right there, but we don't see the officers making arrests. At least it's not taking a shot. There's everybody streaming, running out of the Sears in almost full view of the police officers. They just happen to be protected by a wall and uh, part of the building itself, and they are... David, David, we're going to interrupt right now. We're going to Alan Mendelson, who has uh, Chief Gates with him. Uh, Alan, please. Hello. Alan, you're on the air? Chief Gates at Parker Center. Uh, Alan Mendelson at Parker Center with me is Police Chief Darrell Gates, and he's just been briefing the media. We'd like to find out specifically now what your plans are with the National Guard. General feeling of fear. 
Again, I'd like to ask you for some words of reassurance here. What could you be telling everyone in the metropolitan area? Well, I, I can tell uh, everyone that uh, we're doing everything in our power, and uh, once again, we will bring it under control. There's no question about it. Uh, in my mind, uh, uh, in 1965, I was the field commander. Uh, uh, then, uh, it took us uh, three solid days to really get it under control. Really, uh, it was five days. We had 14,000 uh, National Guardsmen in, that, in those days, so I think we're ahead of the game uh, this time, and I think this is a much more difficult situation. And we came over here, and every one of us wrote down the phone numbers of the people who were loading all of this stuff into their cars, and I think we've already all agreed that we're going to pursue this thing when all this settles down, and we'll see how the criminal justice system works for looters who are coming into our neighborhood and destroying the place that we live and love and work. All of us live here, and all of us, we yelled at them, right? As soon as we yelled at one, they all began fleeing. As soon as we came over and confronted them, they all, they all ran like mice into the woodwork. All it takes is just standing up to them and saying, we don't want this to happen. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. And that's what makes us all so angry, I think. We're sitting at home, and we're seeing these people take our city away from us. And Good. we're going to get it back. And we're not going to take the law into our own hands. Yeah. But what we're going to do is take down their, their phone numbers and pursue this, their license numbers, and pursue this in court because these guys are not legit.